We're going to go through a low side pump down procedure for the reciprocating compressors, either the X426, X430, or the X640. First thing that you're going to have to do if you have an older style unit that has a low pressure switch is to bypass that switch. Otherwise, all the new units that have the Intelligent 3, you will have to put the unit in CH operation. Go through the function test and scroll until you get to your CH. And that will then bypass your suction transducer and your EPR valve. Once you do that, uh, make sure that you allow the unit to run for 5 to 10 minutes. This will allow the oil and the refrigerant to get separated in the compressor and have the unit stabilize. Next thing you'll need to do is go ahead and front seat the dryer inlet valve. Once you do that, you'll be shutting off your flow of the refrigerant throughout the system and you'll watch your suction pressure actually pull itself into about a 20-25 inch vacuum. You want to pull it into about a 25 inch vacuum and let it run there for a minute to two minutes time frame. Once you've pulled it down to 25 inch vacuum, go ahead and stop the unit. Once you stop the unit, stand back and observe your suction pressure. It should maintain a vacuum below 15 PSI or 15 inches for at least two minutes or longer. If the pressure would rise to zero and stop there, it could indicate that you got an outside leak. However, I would start the unit up the second time and pull it down and confirm. If you pull it down the second time and holds, you're in good shape. Now, if the pressure rises above zero and keeps on climbing, that indicates to you that you have an internal leak. It could be either the dryer valve leaking or it could be the valve plate leaking. And then here again, don't overlook your gauges. Once you've gone ahead and pulled down the vacuum and you want to do some service work, what you will need to do is bleed back one to three pounds of pressure into the low side. By doing that, when you do open up your system, you avoid sucking air and moisture into the system. Once you bleed back one to three pounds, then you're going to be able to go in there and service the system. You can either add or remove oil, you can clean the expansion valve screen, change out the expansion valve, replace the liquid line dryer, replace the oil filter if you have one, in. replace the low pressure tubing of any sort on the low side or your viper server, or replace or work on your EPR valve. We will need to run the unit for about 10 minutes prior to doing the pump dump. This will allow for the liquid refrigerant to start to boil out of the oil and get that separated. Uh, once we've gone through and uh, let that system run for a bit, what we're going to do then is go ahead and uh, double check to make sure that our port cap is snug or tight on our dryer in that valve, the valve that we will be front seating for our pump dump. So ensure that your port cap is tight on your uh, service valve before you go ahead and uh, front seat that valve. Once that port is tight, go ahead and take your cap off your service valve. That will then give you access to your dryer in that service valve so that you can put a ratchet wrench on there and front seat that valve. We go ahead and front seat the valve. When we front seat that valve, we will be restricting the flow of the refrigerant going from the high side to the low side. So once that valve is totally front seated, we'll now see that our suction pressure that we have will now start to be reduced and actually pulled into a vacuum. So what we want to do is pull that system into about a 20-25 inch vacuum. It's probably going to take a couple minutes to get it pulled down there because the liquid refrigerant and so forth is still probably boiling out of the oil. Once it's pulled down to about 20-25 inch vacuum, you can let it run about 2 or 3 minutes. Then what we're going to do is shut the unit off. Once we shut the unit off, we want them to observe our suction pressure, or actually our vacuum, and make sure that it holds. That vacuum should hold 
the 15 uh, inch or better for at least a couple minutes. If the pressure does rise and comes up to zero and stops there, that could be an indication that we have an outside leak. Zero in our gauges is the same as atmospheric pressure. If for some reason that unit cannot hold a vacuum and that suction pressure rises, and before you know it, the discharge pressure and the suction pressure are about the same, that's indicating that we have an internal leak. So it's a good chance that we have a valve plate that's leaking internally. Under normal conditions though, when you pull it down to a vacuum, it should hold and maintain the vacuum. Now if you're going to do some service work on the low side, what you're going to have to do then is open up your discharge gauge uh, handle and allow high pressure from the high side to go across to the low side. So you're going to open up your low side and let that pressure uh, move into the low side and get yourself out of the vacuum. You want to bring enough pressure across to bring it up to about 1 to 3 PSI. Once you have it up to 1 to 3 PSI, then you are safe to go in and work on that low side. You can take any one of those components in the low side apart or out, which could be your expansion valve, your liquid iron dryer, a compressor oil filter if you have one, any of the low side tubing, the suction line, EPR valve, or if you need to add or replace oil, you can do that very safely once you've done this procedure. Once you've made your repairs, I'd leak check the area that you just repaired, evacuate the, the low side by itself, and when you're all done with your evacuation, go ahead then and backseat your dryer inlet valve, and that will put the unit back in normal service again. This concludes doing a low side pump down.